kick Meghan out of the window. Harry regrets it before it's too late after Palace put Duke in his place. Truly, I did not expect to find myself feeling desperately sorry for Prince Harry. Yet as the days of mourning for his beloved grandmother passed by, this young man appeared to suffer humiliation after humiliation. Grief, shame and anger passed continuously across his face and I could only pity a man who still to me seems to be the child who followed his mother's coffin in full glare of public attention. All seemed hopeful at the beginning. He had already been in the country that was, and I suspect at heart, still is his home. He did not receive the news of his grandmother's death as quickly as the rest of the immediate family. He was still in the air on his way to Balmoral. But he was told as soon as was possible, certainly before the news was made public, he was with his closest relatives to share their immediate grief. I've not always been complimentary about Harry, since he married a woman whose fame had come from a TV series and who now appeared to me to have landed a starring role beyond her wildest dreams. He should never have been persuaded to take part in interviews with Oprah Winfrey, critical magazine coverage, silly podcasts and tell-all memoirs, boosting his and his wife's earning power while undermining the reputation of his family. But now here he was, grieving for his grandmother and experiencing the real power and admiration that being a close member of the late Queen's family might afford him. Harry was here to take a full part in mourning for the Queen, but I cannot understand why a father who declared his love so openly and so dearly longed for reconciliation between his two sons would have spent the days after the death of the Queen exposing his second son to constant humiliation. Baron Donat discussed the Queen's funeral proceedings and mentioned Prince Harry saying hello to his wife during the procession. The retired senior British Army officer claimed that it was wonderful that Prince Harry was back and expressed a positive sentiment for the Prince by stating how great he thinks he is. Lord Donat went on to discuss with Piers Morgan what effect the events of the past 10 days have had on Prince Harry. The service in Westminster Abbey saw the royal family and over 2,000 mourners gather at 11am to pay homage to the Queen. Sat behind his father King Charles and stepmother Camilla, the Queen Consort, the Duke of Sussex was visibly emotional. Expert Miko Cleland added, We've seen the brothers out together and we've seen them sitting near each other at occasions. And I'm sure they must have talked behind closed doors as well. I think now is the time grief brings families together and we've seen this coming together. Meanwhile, Meghan Markle is walking on a dangerous path as she compares herself to heroic Nelson Mandela. In a recent interview with The Cut, the Duchess of Sussex revealed people in South Africa rejoiced on her wedding day as much as they did when Nelson Mandela was released from jail. She's made some extremely bad mistakes in this interview. The idiocy of mentioning Nelson Mandela in the piece shows she's not taking advice or she's listening to very bad advice. In her interview in The Cut, she says she can say anything. This will be taken as a threat to the royal family. It's therefore particularly strange timing that she and Harry are visiting the UK next month. She's unpopular and at war with the press and in a rift with the royal family. Fitzwilliams added, They're also hostile and a clear danger to the royal family with Harry's memoir due out soon.